All right, so this might look rough now, but the biggest goal is all about the sort of um, texturing. So let's go ahead and add a texture. And so that you can easily see what you're doing, I usually just crank it to, to red in order to apply the filter, uh, the effect first. So uh, with this first biome, let's go ahead and just add the flow. You can see now where we carved earlier, as rough as it looked before, it looks not terribly bad right now. Um, you, you can tell if I were to hide this, I easily cut this out where I wanted some sort of um, river and creek to take place, but by using the flow simulated uh, distribution here, it's naturally filled in those areas a bit more. So look at it this way as what we did before, we weren't painstakingly trying to, you know, match one point for one point where exactly these uh, flow lines are going. But what we did was we sculpted where we wanted this material to be guided to. So instead of just, you know, right here, it looks pretty haphazard and doesn't have a nice flow range to it. But if you help guide and shape the terrain a certain way, the flow simulation will be painted in sort of where you imagined it to be. Of course, you know, Stefan said that there's going to be a river tool so that it's will probably be quicker and easier to use that tool when it comes available where the start and end points of the rivers are going to be. And um, Stefan, do you imagine the sort of way that works is you're able to control how many like legs there are off of the river and how many sort of, like feather the streams that feed into the uh, river spline that you create? Or is it going to probably work a little different? <laughs> um you don't have to answer that if it's confidential right now <laughs> but well you know it's connected to a new feature and uh gotcha. which is gotcha yeah, so i can't tell you we right now will, but, but it'll be amazing <laughs> just know that it'll be amazing and it'll work <laughs> yeah okay so i won't we won't um reveal any of that stuff just yet all right, so in this area, it, it, you know, you can see that it doesn't look like the collection sort of area that we've made looks too great at this point. So what we can do is always add another texture to, to, to fill in sort of where the collections are going to be. And, by to do, and to do that, we add a cavity distribution. So we sort of remember we painted in this area to sculpt. And it kind of looks exactly where I sculpted before. But we're going to change some of these cavity settings. The first thing that I want to do is make sure the cavity is only affecting either A, a certain slope, or a certain height range. In this case, I'm going to do one right now where it affects a certain height range. So let's lower this value and let's take it so that the collection is mainly right here and at the base area. So I'm going to keep lowering this till it's about right. Lower it by a little bit. About right. Uh, one more notch. About right here. So there is sort of where we want water to sort of simulate that it's being collected. So before it and after. Now we can adjust the step size here to be a little bit smaller or a little bit larger, however fine tune you want that to be. But one great thing that I like to do is sort of make the step size fill in just a little bit. And let's lower the height ever so slightly more, one notch more. And then what we can do is either A, take the top range and feather it out. But let's not do that. Let's showcase how we can feather that based on distribution. Let's just use this as an example. So for this height, we can change how the edge of this height is being distributed by clicking on the effects tab here. And we can choose flow again if we wanted to, but we're actually going to choose, you know, some differences between simple and small flow. I'm going to choose small flow in this case. And you can see it's added some sort of this feathered effect right here. We were to change the strength, it'll 
blend in a little bit too much or change the strength to zero, it blends in none. So we, we just notch this up just a little bit so it looks like it's feathering right here. And you could change the direction which the left slider goes to where it's pushing into the red and all the way to the right makes it feel like the red is being pushed out. So we're just going to do it in. And another form that we could do is if we didn't want to use small flow, we could use go back. We could use simple flow, which is a, another different sort of form. And there's different modes to this, which we can uh, cover later, but it's a little bit different in nature. But I'm going to stick with small flow and increase its strength just a tad so it's not i don't i want this end here to be a little sharp now we could instead of using small flow we could sort of add a noise offset and this is going a noise offset is also going to you can see it's feathering feathering that edge a little bit so if we add a noise offset to this say it's pretty high and then with a, in addition to this, we can add the small flow to that. And the small flow is just going to take the noise offset and sort of uh, spread the love as you will. So if strength is zero. You can blend that a little bit right there. And so let's change the step size a little bit. Be like that. And fine tune the height just a little bit. Much. All right, so you get the idea. Even even here, it's collected uh, quite heavily. <laughs> I hate to be that guy, but when is the next World Creator sale? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 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 Well, in general, we do not. We don't make sales. We we typically do sales at the end of the year, Black Friday and Christmas sales. This is what we do. But during the entire year, there's no sale. And um, yeah, I mean, the, it's my change because with work with we a lot of things will change actually. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I just I just uh, suggest to follow our website. And well, in about two or three weeks, it will be completely updated anyways, with a lot more information also with more, uh, with a new WordCraft 3 update uh, for the alpha version. It's also no longer called WordCraft 3. <laughs> ah, we're going to introduce um, yearly numbers, WordCraft 2020, 21, 22, and so on, you know. I think that makes sense because, you know, at some point, like most software, you know, this is obviously the third major version of the software, but you know, I feel with this particular version, it's nice to stick with it. And each year, you know, like software around the board always has a year date to it. And it just keeps, you keep adding to like this UI, this pipeline, this generation that you guys have painstakingly coded from scratch now, as opposed to world creator two, you know, this is a nice platform to say, hey, we're just going to build upon on top of this. So the the assigning a three or four or five is kind of redundant at that point. If you're just going to stick with this sort of, you know, setup and it's just changing based on a, a new year, even if the UI switches a little bit or features switch a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree that um, a year makes sense. Good yeah. idea. <laughs> All right, so before I go too far, um, I meant to talk a little bit about this flow um, um, sort of uh, distribution here. So if the base settings like right here doesn't show you enough of, or if you can't um, see sort of the direction that uh, the water is going to take, then we can obviously need to adjust some of these settings to be able to see that. So I'm going to run through what these do real quick and explain. So iterations here is basically how many samples you want the generator to simulate the 
following settings. So if it's only going to here, if I can grab it, simulate one or five times, it's not doing much right now, but you can see the higher I go, it's going to basically add more samples to what the, the remaining settings will do. So the, the higher you go, the more amount that it's going to appear, obviously, and the less amount, because it's all based on what these next settings do. So let's keep it somewhere about right there right now. And uh, give me a second. So now velocity threshold is an interesting one. So it basically is establishing a specific conditional limit of sediment of how sedimentation will move. Uh, in layman's terms, basically, the higher the threshold on this slider, the faster the water will move. Thus, the faster water moves, the less time it not only sits in a given spot on the ground um, and filling in an area, but it also is the less sedimentation it will move. So if water moves slower, it'll spend more time soaking into the ground, discoloring, discoloring it a little bit, and also be like um you know the more the more time water spends on the soil the more it seeps and saturates the ground that's where you get mudslides and things you know in california where it rains so heavily it softens the ground and then thus it moves the entire uh ground so it sort of pushes sedimentation so all you need to know is that the higher the value here the faster water is going to go down, thus not discoloring the terrain very well. And the lower the value, the more time that the water will spend in this spot, thus it colors the terrain more, if that makes sense. So this gives you an opportunity to do uh, mud areas really well, wet areas, sand areas really well. So we're going to keep that about right here right now. Good morning, Jay Paskey. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Um, I know, I don't know if John is streaming much anymore. I haven't seen him in a while, but it's good to see you around here, buddy. Um, okay, so on to the next one is range strength. So we can increase and decrease, and it looks like this is also adding more or less water. But what this is doing is it is a factor of how much or how heavy it is raining, basically. So it is a general slider for amount of, of rain basically. And Stefan, if I say any of these uh, wrong, please do uh, correct me. This, are, yeah. These are just my sort of um, education, educational guesses <laughs> yeah. of what they ought to be doing. So again, range strength is the amount. So one thing that you could do to help see the simulation more is you can increase the range uh, strength and increase velocity. And you can sort of fine tune by increasing the that a little bit where you want to nitpick where the flow is going to be a little bit to help you this is all to help you um sculpt better now smoothness is a really fun one so let's let's sort of uh increase this a little bit so that we can remove some of the water if we add just a touch of smoothness it added let me go over here so you can see that effect so if we were to increase this all the way it's going to feather out the smoothness a bit too much so this smoothness as i decrease this is going to add help feather out the, the top end of all of the effects so it's going to make it feel a bit here's a good one that we can see so no smoothness you can see how sharp some of this is if I smooth out the tail ends just a little bit, yeah, bless you. It's going Sorry. to, um, no, you're fine. It's going to feather in the top ends just ever so slightly. And that could, if you have not a whole lot of smoothness, um, or in that, if you have not a whole, a whole not lot of water, that's a, wow, that's a tongue twister. If you don't have a whole lot of water, it's going to help feather out those top ends a little bit. Flow cut off again, think of this as the uh, sort of a clamping value. So if we were to increase this, we can sort of clamp the top in and remove some of it or lower it and it'll bring it all back. So here's a good, here's a good thing to, that we could do. So have a 
flow cutoff of about right here and increase the smoothness just a tad. And you can see it makes, it just sort of makes the actual flow simulation feel more real than it actually, than it is. You know, you can feather this out more or less, but it just makes how it blends in with the terrain feel more realistic. All right, and then flow smoothness is basically the overall blending value of the effect. So if you're not smoothing it out, it just sort of removes it, but you can blend it in more as an overall effect, and it just keeps adding more and more to the, the scene. So it's this is sort of your overall, the entire um, distribution's blending, blending totality, and... This smoothness here blends sort of the actual simulation of the flow tails and streams. So it helps make more of a realistic uh, approach in my eyes. All right, so that's sort of what um, the flow does. So I just made that texture just so that you guys can see uh, what it does. So if we go back to this texture, we can add a little bit of little touch of smoothness to kind of smooth out those top ends a little bit. So now at this point, we go back to that, go to the next one. All right, so I'm not gonna spend hopefully a whole lot longer, but what we can do now is sort of try and texture this in a bit of a realistic way. So I'm gonna take the low texture here and make it sort of a really ugly <laughs> green so far and let's try and get this to a similar brown try and get all these values about the same to start off with so what i want to do is for the concave one let's have it be a little bit of a light color and this one we can do too. It's sort of be saturated. So we're not trying to do too much to it. We're just adding a little bit right now. But let's also double click on this texture, which is the one with all the flow. Double right, double right click on it to duplicate it. Put it over here and let's try and match up a little bit of what this color is it might be a little hard without the. Oh, we can't type in those values yet, can we? FF538. We can't type in yet, can we? Oh, we can. FF5388. Seven B. Too many S. Too many S. That's getting close. All right, close enough. So with this flow, let's actually make it a touch darker. So the, we would want to sort of add a light version first to kind of sort of lightly color or lightly wet in the terrain. And we'll do a darker duplicate of the first um, flow that we did to showcase the actual wet, the really wet version of it. But let's change the flow cutoff so it's not filling in a super big amount of the terrain. So we can increase the flow cutoff. And then let's also change its roughness. So let's get it in a reflection in the sun. So let's make this pretty reflective. So if we were to completely remove it, there's no water and start decreasing the flow cutoff to add the water back. So now you can see right here that darker color is going to be reflective in the sun. And that's where the actual where we're hoping, you know, water could occur. And then this side color here, the the 
not the concave, but this one is sort of the secondary sort of color. So we could really make it shiny, but if we just lower it just a notch, then we're just basically simulating how water has moistened the ground, but not fully, uh, not, not fully uh, covered. We'll make this one pretty shiny. When I double click the texture, nothing happens. What is my fault? It's double right click. If you double left click, it's not going to do anything. But if I were to double right click on this color here, it'll duplicate it. <clears throat> to sort of um, uh, help explain what I just did there. <laughs> I just I know I said double click at first, but then I, I meant um, double right click. Let's change this cavity step just a little bit smaller like that. And let's duplicate this. So the cavity is a tad bit bigger, but let's make the cavity also small flow. We're going to want the cavity to also be small flow. So strength. Yeah, let's do that so cavity step size this needs to be a tad bit bigger so we also in addition to the height being small flow we need to add a small flow distribution to the cavity effect and the reason is because right here it could be too sharp so if we add a small flow to the actual cavity we can just add a slight notch where that's feathered out ever so slightly ever so slightly there we go oh great did that uh did that work ghost i hope that worked out all right Caleb asks, is it possible to texture the landscape within world creator with quixel textures then export it easily to Unreal Engine 4. Um, actually, use, yes, but in, real, in this version, um, using actual textures isn't implemented yet. Right now, it's just, it's just you know, applying colors. Um, but you will be able to import any number of um, custom textures, either from Megascans or Substance or your own custom textures, whatever... Um, textures you want you'll you'll be able to input those here what i would do honestly what i would do before you start um plugging in real world textures like mega scan textures i would practice you know like what we're doing here just doing with colors because then you can really see what you know this string of this string of uh, <clears throat> excuse me um distribution is going to do and that way you can learn what, um, learn how to texture the terrain based on just color first. Because at the end of the day, <clears throat> in most cases, what you're going to do is export um, these textures as masks to be able to use in Unreal Engine 4. And you're going to apply, you know, mega scan textures to that mask in Unreal Engine. That way you can have all the culling distances and and scalers and and stuff work well so this way you can texture here in world critter three and then export the masks at some point the heat maps and stuff to use later on but once the plugin gets pipeline gets worked out perhaps you know texturing it here within world critter three soon to be just world crater um can just be a straight plug and play <clears throat> yeah like splat maps you can now in World Creator 2 export splat maps. Um, this, you know, so you, however you want to use the maps is completely up to you. You can use splat maps or you can use heat maps or just alpha maps. However, however you want to go about using those in Unreal, because in Unreal, you can use splat maps or alpha maps or, you know, alpha masks, however you want. It's completely up to uh, your pipeline. Once textures do get um, 
come to work creator to be applied here we'll go through that but it, it'll be easy what i mean even whenever they are in here what i would recommend first is to texture based on color and after you get sort of the distribution down pat based on color then you can convert over and add um the uh texture back in with real mega scans textures all right so again let's go ahead let's change these colors which color is this Gotcha. Let's change this to a little bit more desaturated. And let's desaturate this one a little bit more too. There we go. All right, I'm going to add a black sort of material to sort of darken up a couple areas. Dark. <clears throat> All right, let's just go through some of the steps here. Add this based on slope. Let's add distortion to the end, as well as blur the blur the edge just a tad. And we'll be sure to definitely go through all of what I'm doing here more fine-tuned later sure because there are a lot of sort of ways we can go about texturing things all right well, last thing I want to do here real quick is add a highlight to all the rocky areas so we're going to do cavity for this for this particular bit. So we got this cavity. We're going to change it to convex. Change the step size to be really tiny. So the step size is going to adjust how much of the concave nature we're going to apply to. But if we take it all the way down, it's going to sort of, you know, in a way, apply itself to the mass of of all the concave areas see how it just sort of snaps and applies everything applies it as a whole to all of the concave and then let's add a where is it? noise offset so let's add a little noise edge to this so if i were to feather this up you can see right here it's going to feather up that effect add a little bit of noise to it and then I'm going to add a slope on top of that and then we're going to feather this so this noise I'm going to blur the edge of the slope just a touch just like 0.1 then for this slope we're also going to do um do a small float kind of blanket it out just a little bit and now you can see a little bit what's what it's doing so if i were to undo this and redo it undo this and redo it so it's a little little neat go ahead and add a nice green so when it comes to vegetation uh, depending on your biome, I mean, this is really heavily dependent on your biome, is where green will be applied. So vegetation will always naturally go where water goes. So you can seemingly what we can do here with this green is create a mask. And this mask for later on, we can apply here within World Creator 3, or we can use this mask to be applied to, like again, in Unreal Engine 4, as a mask for where trees, rocks, shrubs, grass, everything, all of that stuff will be uh, apply to so for this grass we're going to also do it based on a cavity but obviously the concave cavity because we want it to go to wherever the water is but we're also wanting to apply it to a slope so it's going to multiply that so that the slope you can see if we were to increase this cavity it'll increase itself with sloped areas so everywhere where there is a concave uh, area, 
we can apply this particular uh, texture to. Depth size, let's make it a little smaller. And slope, now this is where it can get interesting. So we can apply, apply to a really long slope, cavity step size. Now, again, this is another thing that we could do if we were to lower the step size completely. You can see it's gonna fill in most of all of this area here. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say we're increasing this size. If we were to lower this a little bit and then add a small flow to that. See now we've right here in this area, we are distributing that side a little bit based on the grass a little bit. All right, so let's duplicate this by double right clicking. And let's change, let's change sort of the pipeline point of view. Let's remove slope entirely. And let's add a hefty amount of it. Go. Yeah, you're welcome. No problem at all. Do a little bit of distortion. Just a tad of distortion. All right, let's do angle 3D and we're gonna cover angle 3D um, quite extensively in another uh, live stream. But seemingly we can change how it's being distributed based on the angle of the mesh of the terrain, both, both in the horizontal and the vertical angle. So what I want to do is change it based on, right now it's based on a vertical angle of zero. So it's gonna try and latch itself onto most of the closer zero formed uh, meshes. And if I change it to right all the way to 90 or negative 90. It depends on which side you can see it transitions itself between which slope side it's uh, wanting to adhere to. But I'm wanting to cover somewhere around here. If I were to move the horizontal angle, we can see that we can shift the horizontal angle some. All right. So see if we move this here, if that changes it much. And we're going to also add a noise offset to add some noise to the rim. And then add another small flow to feather that out just ever so slightly. Just ever so slightly. All right, so let's now take this water and right. Here we go. So we're starting to get a little bit closer. Let's add another color. We're going to go definitely be going over a intense texturing guide at some point right now. I'm apologize that I'm just kind of doing this fairly quickly to get you guys a little something to look at. What do you think, Stefan? Have any words of <laughs> words of uh, encouragement for anyone getting started? Getting started with what, creator? Yeah. <laughs> um, of course, I mean, it's it's fast <laughs> it's easy to use you get um you get results extremely quickly and you get pretty nice rendering especially with the new version yeah. and with the next update you get features that are just completely mind-blowing so it will be more fun so just make sure to check our discord there you can see some mm -hmm. user showcases from our users they've done in world creator 3 and the next um, update also will have the export functions included, so you actually can use it for productions. 
not officially because <laughs> it's not of, finished of course but you, also, but you already can use it and yeah then it's more value and we, and we really have pretty awesome fi uh, uh, features like the real world map browser which is really amazing i love it new more um um bug fixes of course new more improve uh, uh, a lot more improvements and all this stuff so this really huge things happening and yeah can look forward to it and yeah in two or three weeks i'll be able to talk about this really new feature that is arriving into world creator and the yeah. results are really promising so far we'll so, be able to talk about it together <laughs> yes 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 i just cannot wait because this is really mind-blowing i've never seen this before so this will be very very interesting <laughs> oh yeah so let's see before let's see how long have i been going i could just ramble on a day almost an hour and 30 minutes getting close so at the at the end of the day the whole we could spend a long time on 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 texturing this but the whole point was to try and show you guys how to use basically the ideal thing is to show you how to use the flow distribution effect in order to guide you on how to sculpt a terrain based on the natural formations. Um, I think so far this right here is my best example of just relatively creating something or, you know, there's a lot of settings to go about doing things. This is there's a little much right there. But uh, in this case, we have a nice sort of flow where you can then use the flow distribution setting or flow uh, painting to really showcase where the water is. And I think that's one of the key, uh, the key aspects. I'm going to try to see if we can add some wa actual water. Attached too much. One more notch. Real finicky. All right. We have water collection here. And, you know, like in this area where water would be definitely collecting, we'll be able to texture and add sedimentation based on water level two. Uh, just like we could in World Creator 2. So, and, you know, of course, with this sort of example, if you have things the way you want, sort of, let me turn this water off so I can showcase. If you have sort of a nice texturing pipeline that we have here, we can even go back to the biome under custom base shape and say, hey, I want to add a little bit more emphasis on this. So we can then always go back and add more emphasis on little areas, little tiny streams to hopefully allow the uh, generator to retexture these areas with the sort of pipeline that we've created. We lower this just a bit. Then we lower this too. And we've added even more, <laughs> even more detail. A little bit more sedimentation. Here we go. All right, perfect. So um, I think that it, that covers the bulk of what I was wanting to showcase to you guys. Um, again, primarily just to show the sort of workflow of getting some sort of um, stream to river river or from stream to creek creek to river pipeline and how to go about the collection process here of course this is still <clears throat> in the early development form of this um stefan teased us with some uh later sort of tools to 
probably make this even more realistic from what we have. So it's just one sort of pipeline that we can go about getting a nice little effect of what we're after. So is there any other last sort of uh, questions that people wanted to ask about the workflow or have questions in general about how to a get access to this or if you have access to this if there's just a general question of what to do um yeah please let us know real quick i'll keep things going for just a tad um any last minute thoughts you want to express stefan before we depart which by the way thank you so much for joining it's great having it's great having another person to sit in and and chat whenever we sort of do these things yeah you're welcome thank you very much thank you very much also <laughs> yeah actually uh yeah i think um once a new update is available um there's of course a lot of more to show mm -hmm. and uh yeah we'll we'll have this in about two or three weeks so it's not far away Oh yeah. Already working on it like like hell. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely looking forward to it for sure. <clears throat> all right, perfect. Um I think that covers it today. Thank you all so much for joining. I will try to go about doing something else next week is the plan every Wednesday, hopefully if nothing comes up. So, um if you have a topic again that you would like me to cover, Feel free to share that in Discord and I'll try to cover it. I believe there were a couple requests, so I'll try to filter through what we can show next week or the week after. But um, yeah, just stick, stick with it and we will give you guys updates on Discord. Thanks to you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.